picking Crystal Maiden first. And this time around, they end up pushing it all the way to the end. But yeah, a couple of matchups here that are kind of questionable for Falcons, right? You've got the DK plus Kunkka against Timbersaw and Phoenix. And you don't really have anything that kills Egg, which I don't... I don't think the panel talked about this too much, but maybe I didn't notice. Uh, they were the looking a lot at the begins. damage potential from both sides in terms of the offensive output, but obviously, if you can place a supernova and basically guaranteed almost protect it, that is really, really big for a matchup like this. So Aurora with an early Phoenix pick going largely unpunished. That's true, but there is a counter sender and eventually Snake King will be level 20 for the 225 attack speed yeah. talent. In That's which case, the Phoenix Egg just can't survive any longer. Definitely going to come into play. Can't wait for that. Thank you, Sunset TV. Um, thinking that, like BSJ talked about, I think the laning stage here should be quite telling. If um, if the Kunkka Shadow Demon can get off to a good start against more Phoenix, that would be good news. However, Morph is one of the better carries at dealing with the consistent harassment of Kunkka because you can just reset your health. Koka isn't exactly a burst type hero in the laning stage. Will be nice in the first few waves, of course, but then imagine eventually the Morph will actually start finding pretty good farm here. And he is not that countered either. I think Falcon's lineup looks really good on paper. I love the heroes they have together, the way they work around the same timings, the way they synergize with spells. But Aurora, similar to the previous game, have decent core to core matchups. So can they get there? Mm. What's well, going to be yep, the only question. time will tell, Cinderman. And we're going to see Crit on the Shadow Demon again. He has some great targets to make illusions of. Eventually, yep. the DK, obviously, the Luna, Morphling, if he needs to. More so than anything you imagine, he is going to be the save against Storm. Yes. His primary, his primary objective is not to create illusions of specific core heroes, but rather to combo break and to set up uh, Amar as well. The Shadow Demon Conquer combination is actually quite interesting. Allows you to do this. Yep, the disruption into Torrent, an old classic combination. Ollie's gonna be forced to dive away. And of course, Shadow Demon, everybody remembers him from Dota 1 Cinderin as a mid hero. Yep. He's transformed into a support. Well, he is also mid. And what do you mean? Wait. Hang on, which hero did you say again? <laughs> Shadow Demon. I thought you said Kunkka. I was like, what? <laughs> Support? <laughs> when was Shadow Demon mid in Dota 1? When he first came out. I did know. people actually play him mid all yeah. the time? I feel like they played him support also from the beginning. No. Incorrect, okay. Cinderin. Good but try. I wasn't around. <laughs> I had a day off. There's and then they so played much, support day two. There's so much useless information in my brain. I just got to get it out during this <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. And half the time, it's not even correct. Yeah, that's probably wrong as well. That's true. I don't know where it comes from. It's probably just dreams that I don't remember, you know? Yeah, Shadow Demon probably wasn't even in Dota 1. He was. Lauren, Are you sure about that? Yes, come on. Oh, you're actually sure? Yes. That's nice. That's uncommon for you to be sure about the <laughs> your day. Very nice. A true rarity. We are blessed. <laughs> to experience this together. I'm the moderator on the subreddit called Confidently Incorrect. That actually makes so much sense to me. Barn off decent damage onto Melreen. Yeah, he's got two in Dragon Blood now, so it will be yeah. a lot more difficult to pick this one up. Be a pretty stable lane. As for the bottom lane, it'll be interesting to see how the dynamic changes now that Q is on the Tiny here together with the Timber Saw instead of the Rubik or... What was it? He played Rubik and then he played... Why can I not remember? What did uh, what did Q play? Did he play? It's been so long, man. It's been an hour. You're talking about last game? What did he play in the two previous games? Because they played Timber three times, right? Played Rubik once. Yeah. What was the other one? And was it Rubik? Was it was it, uh, was it Tiny? No. That's why this is different. <laughs> God damn it, man! I don't know. Maybe you picked the same one twice. I didn't play two Production Rubik. says no, I know, I know. All right, uh, do, a, do a drawing of the hero on the minimap. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> our, our laning stage casting has devolved into just degenerate behavior. Radiant the degeneracy is out of control. Lornoff getting chased a bit by Malreen. Right, I'm looking this up. This is going to bother me for it. All right, go ahead. Enjoy yourself, Cinderin. Crit gonna help secure potentially this this water room, but Malrain should be able to get it just fine. Lauren off. Trying to get something. 
We've seen so many times before. Mountie's just really good at this early mid game pressure, or mid lane pressure, rather. He actually has a blood grenade in his stash. Interesting. Still looking. Take your time. No, I just want to make it more awkward the longer this takes. That's very good. You're doing a great job at that. I'm very proud of you. So something you guys don't know about Cinder, and he's basically the human form of a sloth. Everything he does is <laughs> just what do you mean? so slow. Your Googling skills, your typing, just wandering around aimlessly. He was Rubik twice. Okay. Why did production lie to us? <laughs> I was losing my mind. All right. Good job, Cinder. And we got to the bottom of it. Now can God we cap damn it, this man. game? Like, they said, did we play the same hero twice? And they shook the camera. Yeah, that means yes. <laughs> Apparently. All right, good effort, everyone. It's been long days here. It's okay though. We're back. We're back on track. So tiny instead of two Rubik games. Uh, curious to see how it changes the dynamic in this bottom lane. Obviously, Ollie uh, could maybe go for this. Dead. Dragon Tail is there. Gets off the dive. Not right quite click. Enough. Not enough. Oh, he's ticking though. He's ticking away ever so slowly. Oh, oh, he's got shadow poison though. Nope. Okay. Yikes. Not enough. 20 HP, he we'll might actually died if crit popped them right away. Yeah, potentially. That was close. Got a little bit of region in. Malrain, six minute rune. Ooh, the shield rune is taken by Q. His arms are longer than the dragon. As Amar, he's... I was gonna deny himself to Roche. What? He'll walk into the mighty mind and he will come out a changed man. Yes. Dire All right, he did not go into the mines. Right, he's just going around the long way. Now rain a lot of pressure with this first seed. Oh, skaters in trouble bottom. Yep, the avalanche is there. Oh, oh, into all the into trees. Jazz. That's extra damage. Snake King though got the slow. And Skeeter will live, although Jabs is pursuing this, has the timber chain. Gonna try to go for Snake King instead. Gets him to half HP with just one whirling death. And Q continuing on. And Skeeter. One Lucent Beam, he's gonna attempt to run away. Snake King will eventually be hunted down. And that's first blood for Jabs. They're doing much better in this lane than they were in the last game with their... I don't, I don't know if Tiny is better for this lane than Rubik for what they're facing, but maybe it is. Just the threat on the Crystal Maiden at all times makes it harder for Snake King to play offensively onto the timber as he can just get Avatos back. Snake King, lucky to survive there on almost no health, has to Radiance reset, though. Is under attack. Wisdom Rune being picked up by Q. Ollie All right. again. Round number two. We'll be fine for now. Yeah, crit sticking around. We'll show himself now. As the Seeds of Serenity. Imagine if that worked on towers. Oh. That would be nice. Uh, would almost be as good as the safety bubble we just had for a month. <laughs> Imagine a safety bubble could be cast on towers. Oh yeah, that's good. Lornoff, he wants to get aggressive. Doesn't have that man much mana to work with. Q though, finds his target snaking. Wrong place, wrong time. Four members of Aurora. Well, arguably right place. He died instead of Malreen, perhaps. Eh, Malreen wasn't gonna die. All right, confidently incorrect. Odd at it again. <laughs> Skeeter, working on that mask of madness. And this is the hero that Find will a D -ward here, Q. ball out of control if you leave him for just a little bit. But this time around, the game of 23 is much better than the Sven game just was. He, his lane is good, this time on the morph. The hero to hero matchup against Luna is another good one. Radiant's bottom tower. I think overall, attack. Aurora are just in better shape than game two. Um, game one was outstanding. I don't think they're likely to replicate something like that against Falcons another time, but... We've definitely seen oh, that the higher, here. higher, yeah. Getting chased, Avalanche is gonna find him. He's in the midst of a lot of trees, which means Jabs is gonna do a lot of damage. They're gonna get ganked though. In the meantime, the boat coming in at Skeeter. No Eclipse, but it matters not. His allies have shown up in numbers. Good. And they Good punish Jabs very hard. Yeah, Amar coming down there. A big read from him, big play. That was, or was it actually a TP? I thought he gated, but yeah, I guess he TP'd Radiant's in immediately is under attack. to protect that. Mid tower will be denied by Lorenoff. Standard denied. stuff, Dragon Knight getting mid tower early. Mar might be going a little bit too greedy pulling this wave. 
23 Savage trying to slow him down with that adaptive. Lornoff and Ollie will greet Amar. And he gets bursted. And crit. Just sticking around the tier one bot. Gets off a disruption, but not going to stop the Avatars from coming out. The Chakram remains as well. So another kill to Aurora, who now have a 4-1 kill advantage. But we can see net worth wise still very even. Yeah. In comparison to other games we've seen from Falcons, though, there's one key difference in this game. Amar's game is bad, and that is quite the rarity. That's true. Basically, every game we've seen of them, Crit and Amar win their lane, and Amar starts snowballing. He is sixth on net worth, and it's on Kunka, not a hero that has a tendency of taking over games, playing from behind. Radiant's you still get good utility once you get this Axe, but... The timing of it will be so potentially so late that there will be multiple BKBs on the other side. Maybe Timber this game will be buying a an Eternal Shroud. We'll see if Jabs fancies that. I would like to see him tank up this game instead of buying Dagger Kaya. He has really good initiators on his team. He's got Tiny to start. He's got Storm to start. He needs to be able to tank and frontline for the boys. Uh, so that would be, in my opinion, the better build. On the side of Falcons closing in on Dragon Knight Dagger, which will be huge. That's pretty much what's worth writing home about right now for them. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Is there any way these? Oh, as I say that, Amar might be doing it. I'm gonna say it, any way that Amar is the one taking these stacks instead of the Luna. It looks like that might be. Needs to get some ketchup farm. Hmm, ketchup. Ketchup. Your favorite condiment. Yeah, tomato base with sugar. Sugar makes everything good. He's working on the blade mail into Radiant's the eventual ags. Under attack. I wonder if what crit's gonna go this game. Is this uh is this an ags game for him? Doesn't feel like it. Yeah, I mean the break against the timber can be okay. Eh, you don't have stack nah. yet, Radiant's but kinda meant overall. I think utility attack. items are better. Just getting something to move, like Dagger, Glimmer. I guess the Shard is still okay. But yeah, it is weird to say it out loud, but it kind of isn't a good thing. is going to be stunned right off the bat. The dive comes in into the egg as well. No egg killer like you talked about. It's a nice save, actually. <laughs> save snaking from the burst of jabs, but likely will fall anyway. The zip in from Lorna, very little mana. He's gonna get frosted before Snake King falls. The Phoenix dies, so it's a two for one. Supports the only ones to fall so far is Malreen. It's a Dragon Tail onto Jabs. And Lornoff is gonna have to run away. As four members of Falcons can't really find the core that they were looking for. And this leaves 23 Savage all alone to just push this tower. Yeah, that was a five on four fight. Didn't actually react. Oh, ooh, wow. Oh, I got spicy for a moment there, but he will be okay. Yeah, they uh, play that 5v4, and the trade off is honestly probably Aurora favored. Uh, if not for this deny, which I guess equalizes things a bit. It's a big rotation from Falcons to only trade one support for the two of the side of Aurora, and Morphling is getting big. But the good news for the Falcons is that. Kunka with that ancient stack farmed and this fight has now recovered quite well. He's now back in the top four. 1k lead for Falcons. Quite insignificant. It's obviously going to come down a lot to execution in this one. And Lorinoff will be the. I feel like the man to watch in this game is Storm closing in on Orchid. It's another 500 gold, so probably looking at 15 minutes. And that's going to be the biggest challenge for Crit, because that's something he is far from having a solution for. He needs the Glimmer, needs another, what's that, another 1,500 gold for that, currently. And Shadow Demon. Should yep, be Lorinoff's preferred target. Yeah, I was going to say, definitely. The others are just too tanky, it feels like. And Shadow Demon is going to save them, so... To prioritize them. And that's obviously under the condition that it's like a static 5-on-5 five five where all heroes are present and whatnot. But looking at the lineup of Falcons, it's not far-fetched to imagine that most fights in this game will be quite grouped up. They do have skirmishing power with something like Dragon Knight plus Maiden, for example. But we're not looking at some truly assassin-type heroes. Side so Jabs will the same build as always, it looks like. See if it comes back to bite him or if it's going to work better this time around than it did in game two. Worked well in game one. 
no defensive item on the timber saw, and his only save is Sunray, and I guess defensive toss, which is always a. You can never really rely on that in your itemization. There's that Orchid. 15 minutes. That's what it took Falcons on the offensive. Q. Find Q. He's going to tank the gank. He's got reinforcements coming. The torrent's going to hit. Not going to get the fast kill. Eventually, he will die, but it takes a little bit of extra time. And you can see Crit was the recipient of Jabs's burst damage. Malrain's well, going to the Orchid reveal. Get some stacks of poison onto the tower. Yeah, exactly. The Orchid reveal, now the information. That ends up being a one for one, though. It looks like both sides will not connect any further. Bounce. Good news for Falcons, though, that they keep slowing down Q. This is a very slow blink dagger. We're 16 minutes in soon. Tiny still has another 600 gold to go to get that dagger. And we've seen Q take over games on this hero plenty of times. Quite a few people in the pro scene, to my knowledge, regard him as the best player on the hero in the world. But this game, he hasn't truly got the ball rolling. He's still been part of four kills. He's 0, 2, and 4, which isn't a terrible score, but doesn't really have too much gold to show for it. it does feel like the blink opens up a lot more potential. His tossbacks are absurd. Finds a nice couple bounties there. A little snack. Kaya coming for jabs. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And Amar halfway to his axe right now. Is there an item timing for each side that they're waiting for? Like any type of BKB type purchases? Because the Lincolns is there Dyer's for Morphling right now. Obviously he doesn't want to fight with just one item, but he can definitely participate in a poke. I feel like Malreen's Mage Slayer is worth waiting for. He's going to have it now, though, so Dyer's don't really need to wait anymore. But that is a very powerful item in this game. You want to hit the Timber Saw once, you want to hit the Storm once, you want to hit the Morph once. If possible, just mitigate a lot of that magic output. The side of Aurora have, and of course, getting the magic resist for yourself is also crucial for mitigation purposes. Aside from that, I'm, I mean, Luna is actually just probably kind of not be interested in fighting if she could avoid it entirely until she has BKB, I would imagine. Like, it is kind of high risk to get involved in fights against this lineup. We talked about the tossback potential. Storm is a dangerous hero for Luna to fight into. She can't really commit on the egg until she has BKB. It's going to be too difficult and too protected, so... Falcons, I don't... I think they don't mind this if this just turns into a farm Radiant fist for the next 10 minutes. Scanning. Despite the morph matchup being a bit tricky for the Luna, it's Dark better that we get scanning. to the point where you can at least stand your ground. Take it from there. Yeah, I don't think either side are too upset if this ends up going to the late game. Yeah, Aurora, I love that. They, yeah, that's their specialty. The last Radiant game was probably Snake 60 game. minutes under their average. A dangerous spot to be in. They try to burst them down. They finally do with jabs. It's disrupted, though. The boat is coming for him. Into the Eclipse. Jabs is dead. Nice losing beam to stop that timber chain. The egg is placed, and that means Falcons needs to run away. The focus right now is onto the Luna, but Skeeter able to get to the high ground. And with that, ooh, the oh. Arcane Rune about oh. to be stolen. The Avalanche will prevent it. So Lorenoff gets it in the end and zips away. We'll be able to get back to base, it looks like. So it ends up being the one for one in favor of Falcons. So Snake King, when you put it that way. Snake King not afraid to put his body on the line here. Yeah, this is this is something this team does really well. Oh, Instant reaction from the both from both teams, and a very important disruption here, setting up their whole spell combo. They get that punish, and again, I mean, not to sound like a broken record, but Timbersaw just isn't tanky. If he has a defensive item, he does not die here, but obviously the dagger was also the reason they killed Maiden, so it is a bit of a trade-off. Mm -hmm. Very curious to see what route he's going to take. Snaking, as after. you can tell, he's playing CM okay. in that shot. Jabs is actually going BKB. I thought he was finishing Kai Assange or getting the Eternal Shroud, but will straight up get BKB. Too many stuns, too many problems. Now Lauren off, using that Arcane Rune now. Snaking. Typical CM gameplay here. 
And I will ping out a ward Can't directly. Play. Just know exactly where it is. I feel like she's the most calm persona. Would you agree with that? There's never anything that phases Snake King. He won TI. Stone faced. You know? Yeah. I guess that's very, both good and bad. He's a very even keel kind of guy. Well, I, th I think it's really good for this team. Yeah. So they're going to actually just take the Tormentor right away. Not wasting any time. See what shard they get. Radiance bottom tower is under Both of them would be good. It will go to crit, so... Okay, the cleanse for... Well, Orchid. Orchid, Fire Spirits. And... Radiant Burn. And... That's about it. Face. Face? Yeah. Okay. Clinch your face. Good one. Par for the course. We're not doing too hot today. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has an off day. Oh, three digits. Mm. Oh, very well, precise. Very, very precise. All right, well, Malreen in the cover of smoke. Manta now picked up for the side of Aurora. 23, tower. keeping up with the Luna quite well. Oh, jabs. You're going to be able to get out of this one. Haste. Lots of roots. Freezing field now. Disruption setting up the torrent. That'll be the death of Timbersaw again. Right, this, is a, this is a first pick Timbersaw. Yeah. And they know it's coming. So they have time to pick things that they think would do well against it. It's a lot of magic. The biggest surprise when I look down the net worth is how low Lorinoff is. He's sixth despite being 3-0 three, and 3 on Storm, but... Yeah, that is interesting. His CS, not perhaps not the best, but still. I um, imagined he would be doing a little bit better than this Falcon. Still going to use this, transform this Timbersaw kill into a Roche. I don't think Aurora is particularly yeah. interested in going here. Mostly lane creeps, it looks like. Oh, discrepancy. He's close to his BKB, so... Radiant. Let's see if they even want to fight into this Aegis, though. The skater will pick this up, eventually. Get him close to solo XP, which doesn't really matter these days. It really did back in the day, though. That was fun. Yeah, do you remember stuff. the level one Roches where you could give one hero level five? That's right. Or three I... heroes level three. Yes. I loved it. Yeah. I miss would. those days. Yeah, that basically sometimes the game just ended, so that was kind of great. That's what she stressed. I mean, it could also lose you the game by trying to do it. Radiance middle no. tower is under attack. It's a risk reward. There's one thing we love, it's for our games to be decided in minute zero. A lot of people in COPS would probably prefer that. A lot of people actually try to do that. Yeah. Uh, by different means. Radiance middle tower has Power fallen. trade. Skater will continue Dyer's to barrel down bottom lane. With Melrine. Fortification used by Aurora. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Melrine getting a double stack ancients. That's a nice gift for him. Well, still very even game. 2k lead for, for Falcons. Let's see how well they can use this Aegis. I mean, in games past from this tournament. This is where they really expand their lead. Typically, they're up more than this. As Ollie, he's X'd up. Torrent will hit into the Dragon Tail. Oh, how ironic. Phoenix flew too close to the sun. Good one. Thank you. Radiant top Looks like it will be the tier two. It's not our best day. We'll have four to Falcons. Yeah, you need to rewrite that material, I think. Or get new material, for that matter. It requires you to leave uh, your house at some point, Radiant's though. I know that doesn't happen. Lauren off. That's with rich the coming from you. That's actually so rich. That's why it's ironic. That's, that's irony. That's why it's rich. <laughs> Malrain almost with the Manta. Power in. Bottom. It's an Invis. Okay. Crit will walk across. Oh, he will take it. Okay. I thought he was actually going to leave this one for Malrain. And he maybe wants think it. about an offensive play, but... That's right. Putting it on the Shadow Demon. I try to smoke break with this. He could instantly glimmer and, of course, disrupt himself to buy time if this were to turn into a smoke. Aurora, very congregated. Here we go. Smoke is going to end up popping here in just a moment, although Skeeter heads to the north. Another head. 
Amari, great route. They're going right to Amar. He pops the blade mail, but he's just dead. Oh, far enough, he can't beat that. No, you okay. never know. He thought that probably wasn't alone. Somebody was shadowing him, but I can understand that. But yeah, free pick off for Aurora. And now Falcons will spread the map. Dyer's get middle some farm on the outskirts. And now this is going to leave them with about two minutes left with the Aegis once Amar is back online. Although Lornoff, uh -oh. Dragon Tail initiation. Or should we get me, buddy? There's the Frostbite. Yeah, that is a killer. <laughs> so what turned out initially as a very good pickoff for Aurora to delay this Aegis ends up being a disaster with the mid laner going down. In terms of just overall net worth trade, it's kind Both of about the same. Yeah. Right. As the Dragon Tail finds Q, he'll be taken out next. Is under attack. I feel like I've barely seen 23 on the screen. He's <laughs> just in his own world, farming it up, closing it on flag, either right? Kanda or BKB. Which one is the choice? Which would you choose? Okay, bad question. <laughs> you would choose Kanda every time. Of course, it's more fun. Yeah. And they've already been eliminated from the tournament, so why not? Prioritize your funds. Why not go out with a whimper? Ollie. And the X. It's gonna egg. This is the egg. And they'll just run away. The X into X. As, oh, that's the burst damage onto Malreen. He's better be careful as Jab Spots BKB gets the Chakram off as well. One more Timber Chain, but snaking there with a huge Lotus. Malreen now very healthy. Jazz BKB no longer there. He will blink TP and he's out. So is the Phoenix. Actually flew off the map. So pretty much as out as you can be. Yep. Good mechanic. Interesting he's build. Entering, uh, the Dota 3 terrain. If he's going to follow through with this, this is not popular lately. What's that? The Phoenix Axe. He had Ooh, a quick Ooh, that's, that's spicy. I like it. I think the reason he was... Okay, he changed it to Refresher. Oh, Boo. Man. Boo. <laughs> okay, so I think the reason he was considering the eggs for a moment is that he recognized this is not an egg killer game, so I can actually potentially save and refresh my storm or my timber. Um, you could also kill them. Yes. If you misclick. But since they're already eliminated, yeah, it's they should it's buy Conda and Egg. Fun factor. That's right. Conda Phoenix. Go. That sounds hype. I think if there's anything your fans would love to see from you when you're eliminated, it's fucking up. They love that. Ooh, now there's the Conda for 23 Savage. That's what I like to see. Yep. Good choice, my friend. Now the BKB next on the menu, surely, before the Scotty that he also has in his quick buy. Still 5k lead, not the biggest for Falcons. We've seen... I want to say similar positions from them where I would be more confident in the victory just based on lineups. Yeah. Their lineup, their lineup can absolutely win this late game. Dragon Knight scales like a beast, so does Luna, but Amar oh, not on a traditionally super scaling hero here for him. Yeah, perhaps Aurora is Falcon's Kryptonite. Who would have thought? Crit. Crit. Going off the blink dagger, Dragon Tail to follow. Jab's already half HP, has to pop his BKB in the Eclipse. Essentially wasted then. X mark. Yep, the nice egg timing. is going to be used on the high oh. ground to prevent the bring back. Mosquito will steal the Wisdom Rune. And they're gonna go try to go deep here. They get the Dragon Tail onto Ollie again. Nice Lucid Beam to prevent the dive. Lornoff trying to get some revenge here. Has to pop his BKB. He's taking a ton of damage, has to zip away. Boat comes in, not to much effect. If you guys are wondering where Marfling yeah. is, he'll he'll be on your screens in 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. There he is. Pekanda! Hey! Pekanda still farming. Radiant's bottom tower. Yeah, why not? He doesn't feel like uh, Falcons can push. Oh, I'm not saying it's a mistake. With he's, a Dragonite Luna. He's just, uh, he's just not there. Just keeping people up to date so they don't lose track of who the carry of the game is for Aurora. Yep, they were fair enough. Uh, other Conda. Almost there for Skeeter. We're going to have oh double Conda. Yeah, the Luna one is very good as well. All right, give me your top three. If if Anna unretired Cinderin and he bought Conda, would you call it the Anaconda? As Malreen wow, that's really bad. Runs right into Q. They'll find him in the trees. Frostbite, and the eventual death will come. I assure you. The illusions. Are they going to actually leave it to the illusions to finish him off? That is disrespectful. As Skeeter comes in for the phylactery Lucent Beam. A special kind of Lucent Beam. 
Oh, what was your question? Something useless, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Rate your top three Conda users. Top three. Yeah. Dyer's In terms of effectiveness or fun? Attack. How good they are. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. You're asking me. Uh, I mean, two of them are in the game here, so the only okay. question is, what's the third? And I guess Morph is number one. Uh, yeah, it's okay. definitely number one. Oh, I'm really... <sighs> I don't know if I can separate my heart and my, you're, my you're, head. You're about to say Sniper. I really want Sniper to Yeah, you're about one. to say Sniper. <laughs> I could feel it. I knew it was coming. I mean, the only issue is you do need Axe for that to be good. Yeah. And uh, more damage. <laughs> Whatever, I'll say sniper Zone anyway. Smoky time for Falcons. See if they can run into Lornoff. They are pinging him. Yep, he's got his BKB back. He cannot react. Oh, he gets away right before they get in vision range with the Dragon Knight. Aurora will actually successfully read this and get out. Yeah, they've been doing a pretty solid job. Not letting this lead really grow too much for Falcons. Jabs Perhaps. might be caught. Or who catches who, really? He blinked. Oh, they got all the X. Yes, egg. Egg again. Well, that is a problem. They've been able to do that several times now, force out that egg. Yep. They haven't really been able to, to punish it too much, although Aurora. Wait, what? They're smoking. They are choosing an offensive maneuver now with their egg on cooldown. Yep. This is a really big part of their, their team fight. And 23 is in Fountain. This does not quite make sense Blasting to me right now. Mallory on the cliff. He has Black Radiant Dragon now. Scanning. As a scan comes through, so Falcons are prepared for this. Roche is up, by the way. And this is the old... I mean, I haven't seen a Roche off quite like this. Scanning. Skater, he's actually going to be the front line. They have a toss, they have the burst. Do they have the complete damage to kill this Luna? No, he gets forced out to safety. And Malreen with that Black Dragon. Able to keep the rest of Aurora at bay. So Skeeter. <laughs> I mean, I guess he was confident. Stone cold that they didn't use Disruption or BKB there. And do they go into the pit now that the Dragon form has been used? Yeah, Aurora is actually going to just forfeit it by killing Tormentor. This is free info. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunate shard for them. But it's okay. Considering it's an Aurora game, there's a decent chance to be farming for a while. <laughs> so now Tiny can start to get some more items. Right. Fair enough. So this will be the Aegis, and of course, everyone's favorite topic, Roshan Banner. The Snake King will take it. Now see if AUI 2000 has given them the secret info on how to use it. If they don't use it for the next five minutes, that is the correct usage by my estimation, Cinderin. Mm. Your thoughts? Yes. Okay. Well, Lornoff has an arcane route. Now that Egg is back up, fighting into this Aegis is pretty rough. Do you just wait for high ground defense if you're if you're Aurora? I mean, they're only down 3k, so it's... This game is even. Like, they, they're, they're not really in danger of anything as long as they have their spells in good posture. Oh, Conda! Skeeter takes some damage as a result. His BKB backpacked at the moment. 23 is going dragon hunting. One of the... Great benefits of the Kunkka, able to split push without really having to go there. More dragons. This is where it becomes really obnoxious, 23 Savage. Is that full Agi right now? He's gonna go in for the Conda hit onto Skeeter, but he gets stunned up right off the bat. He clips the follow, he's gonna pop his BKB. He's gonna live as a result. Jab's going in, there's the egg with the Sunray applied. And this is the disengage from Falcons. Amar hasn't gotten the notice though. Pops his BKB, now going back in. And Lornoff will zip away. Ollie on the cliff, attempting to TP out. And he's gonna get Frostbit and killed off. So one dead after all of that. He's gonna buy back pretty much right off the bat. The Torrent Storm, nice connections on the Jets. He pops the BKB, but then dies and drops the Jet as well. Lornoff now has to zip back out, completely out of mana. As 23 Savage trying to finish off Skeeter, but this is just life number one. 
putting yourself in a bit of a precarious spot. And Jax oh, not able to get the connection onto Skeeter. It's going to cost him quite a bit of HP. He actually will not fall, though. That would have been a dieback if they were able to find that for Falcons. And Skeeter will be back thanks to the Aegis. A great result for Falcons there. Yep, so that ends up being Little two, two dead, two buybacks. Maybe a little bit crazy the way 23 starts this going in first. I, I really like that he's doing this to give vision and give them intel in the fight, but Lorenoff is too far away. Look how many spells and how much time is spent before the storm arrives. If he's here five seconds earlier and they pile on their spells better, I think this team fight could have looked really good for them. But... As we get back into the game, lots of Conda usages as Skeeter is going to pop his BKB. Corrin and Boat. Nice, oh, nice man. Dodge. Oh my goodness. That's a sexy, sexy dodge. 23 Savage, also known as the best Morphling in the world, in a vote among 23 Savage. That's right. Self-proclaimed. He won both the judges' vote and the fan vote among all 23s. <laughs> all right, Keep so farm going. So that fight did have a significant. Is under attack. Impact in terms of the net worth. Now we're starting into the 8k territory. Pretty decent for Falcons. But not only the net worth, also in the win condition. Now you know there's no buyback on the timber. And they've shown that they're able to burst him. And the Phoenix in particular is a quite easy kill if Ollie ever missteps. Mm -hmm. Has to be very careful. He's only level 12 on that Phoenix, having a really rough one here. Dyer's Obviously, it's enough to have the level two egg in this game, for fortunately for him, but... Far away from anything here, trying to build up toward a Yules by the looks Dyer's of it. Top tower is under attack. Larnoff will work on a Lincoln's. Yeah, he needs that desperately. It's like so much of his mana is expended just to get away from the fight once Jabs gets bursted down. Falcon's doing a really good job. They, they don't really try and kill the egg at any point. But they disengage pretty much every single time. Are it's going to have to be BKB. And away he blinks. He's going to be going for the Shivas now. Feels like it's been a while since you and I have cast a game where there's this clear divide between carries and next cores. It's like this very big Luna, very big morph, and the drop off is quite significant. Malreen with a 4K lead over the storm. And still, this is really a hyper carry game from both teams. The utility yeah. around it will decide everything. And that's where it's good news to have a Phoenix, because even with no net worth, a late game Phoenix with the right placement of spells and spell casting can have incredible impact per gold for the side of Aurora on defense. And it looks like Falcons are very aware that this of the state that the game is in. They're not trying to push too hard, not making any big mistakes. They don't want to let Aurora into the game. Step by step, trying to expand their lead. But Aurora's keeping it at flat nine. It's, yeah, that, that's, really the, that's the really impressive part for Aurora. Like we said, any kind of a lead Aurora's had, or any kind of lead Falcons have had in this term, they've been able to expand very swiftly, and it just gets to a point where, like at, at this stage, they usually be up 20k. Yeah. Something that Aurora is doing is working. And keep in mind, they have given up the Timber Saw every single time, and playing against that and off. It's not something they've really had to do this tournament. Skeeter on that Luna has the old ninja gear and has enough to, almost enough at least, to finish the Satanic. I think the next Roche is going to be the pivotal one. 23 Savage. And the Storm. The jump. Gonna be able to likely pick off Snake King. They do. It's a lot of mana expended on the storm, but they have pretty good positioning here to probably not get contested by Falcons this time. Octarine for Amar. It looks like Tidal Wave will be next. Yep. 
pretty standard stuff. Get on the Tormentor, though. Yeah. But also consider Bloodstone here. wonder why he chose the... Lincoln's his pop. He's got to use his BKB. Turns into Luna. Takes the Moonglaives as a result. Oh, is coming, though. Skeeter's fine. The 23 Savage BKB down. Nice man to dodge again. God damn. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. That one wasn't quite as impressive, but still. Sure he's impressed with himself. <laughs> <laughs> Let's ask him after the game. Okay, Amar. Well, X back. Skeeter and company looking like they want to take this fight. Just Ooh, Amar. Mid animation for the X. Get through all these Lincolns, though. Lauren off. He gets X. Oh, Ooh. okay. That looked like it <laughs> That was standing on top of the torrent. Close. How does that not hit? Of course, having to contest with this Manta Black Dragon is uh, a feat in and of itself. Just such an annoyance. They have pretty good heroes for dealing with it, though. Morphling, one of the better carries at killing them off quickly. The Timber Saw. So the tools are still available for Aurora. And yeah, but you can make these Shadow really... Demon illusions, Cinder, and yeah. the Manta illusions, and you can just split them on three lanes. Yeah, place a banner in each of them. Oh, don't talk. Oh, the banner is still there. That's I think true. it's expired. What they used? <laughs> yeah, the top creeps were pretty strong for a while. Damn it, Cardas! Well, Jenkins did ask him how to use it, and Curtis said he didn't know. No, he said he said no. He, he's not going to tell. Him. Oh, okay. Well, Jenkins said, "Can you tell me how?" And he said, "No." You can interpret oh. that in two different ways. That's pages. true. I didn't think about that. Mark, oh, quick BKB. He is out of there. I'll teleport. Is under attack. Oh, he gets X. Oh, oh, that was sick. Nice. So Morphling turns into Kanka to get the X off, and Mar, that interaction is so weird, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Uh, Skeeter with the Lucid Beam, Conda. Malreen. Oh, ooh. All right, Close another nice fire. Play. Sunray coming into play. Cute, taking heavy damage, but Lornop is in the thick of things. X and the Taurus are going up, not really finding much, though. Falcons will reset the egg. Force them back on timing the torrent. Perfectly timed, though, and there's the silence and the destruction of the Phoenix. 70 seconds without Ollie. They're actually going for the... I was going to say, there's no way you're going to damage that. Running through Savage, a able to make it to the barrier. Falcon's lineup is so difficult to kill. Yeah. Dragon Knight is annoying. The Kunkka has boat and long reach. The Luna's mega tanky. Defensive support from the Shadow Demon. Uh, both teams really are hard to kill, but ultimately they will poke and prod down the Phoenix after forcing the egg. X marks the spot. With that Tormentor killed, lead is back up to five digits. While Reen will get the fireball. Skitter will get Wisdom Rune. Radiance Already level 25 on the Luna. Level something worth looking at in a slow game like this. Who's going to get the big talents first? And it is the Radiant side with the Luna on 25. Morph coming up to 24. So, not too far off his 25 talent, which is probably going to be the waveform cooldown, you'd imagine. Roche underway. Skeeter not in the pit to help out yet. Backing out. They get the roar off, and maybe they're just trying to bait it, which is yep, that sound. They are. Cool. 23. Oh, the opener. That's quite a bit of damage. We get the attribute shift off. The boat is coming. Pops the BKB. Torn Storm is there. There's Amar popping his blade nail now, but look at the damage onto Jabs. He has to BKB and try to run away. Not sure if he'll find it, though. Way too much damage from Falcons. They rip right through him. And now, looks like the Tiny is next. Not sure they can take on 23 Savage, so we'll have to settle for the support. The Havoc Hammer is enough from Amar. So two dead for Aurora. Both maintain buyback for now. And they force it out, probably to Roche Pit first, I would assume. I haven't really seen that too much, where they just proc the sound cue and then back away to, yeah. to set something up. That's pretty cool. Nice bait. Looks like they want to push though. Uh oh. Dragon Tail again. The attribute shift comes off. As 23 Savage taking a full eclipse. No wait for for five seconds. Do they have the damage? Yes. He does have buyback though. That's three dead for Aurora. They're going to have to expend it. Once this tower goes down, Luna will decimate your base. 
They're losing minimum two lanes if they don't buy back. Absolutely. They, actually, they could force Throne if they really want the buybacks to come out here. Yeah. They'll go for the wave. One for the torrent in the fountain. Very important. So, first lane to Falcons. Just the fortification again. And Aurora almost certainly going to be buying back here. Mystia always tries to go for it, but yeah, the Dragon Tail comes out. With the stun onto Malreen. Able to get out for now, though. As Ollie does not. He does have his egg, Skeeter. Now he's getting on him. Pops to Satanic, trying to 1v1 versus 23 Savage. There is the egg as well. Doesn't have the sun ray. Oh, actually, there it is. It'll force Falcons to back away for now. Not quite able to get the melee racks mid. Isn't it just weird to watch? Every time there's a supernova, all the Falcons just walk away. Yeah, <laughs> they do. They don't ever try to fight in it. They just, they just walk away, and they can, because the way most fights seem to start is either Q gets jumped or Q jumps. So he can't toss them back into the supernova and force that fight to take place. Falcons will just poke out that egg, back off, and then go again. There's not enough zone control from the rest of Aurora to really enable this Phoenix, it seems. Maybe a Storm Axe could help. And a Snake King. Ooh, he's actually going to avoid any initiation there from Aurora. And Lorna already used half his mana pool just to try to catch him. Tidal, Tidal wave. wave onto Q. What's and 23? 23 Savage all alone. The combo. Oh my the god, core, what is he's that? dead. Two minutes without Morphling. Was what? trying to flank, but that might just cost them the game. I mean, they are down 30k. Oh boy. That is a rough way to lose. He wanted the backstab, got ca gets caught off completely alone. And yeah, you're right. It's like, what do you do now? Amps just. That might be it. Falcons into the base they go. Can Aurora try to defend with four? Phoenix would have to buy back for it, of course. Doesn't have egg quite yet. And. That is going to be almost Megas. One more barracks to go if they want. Oh, they do get it. Now the tier fours are next. Q and Jabs, last stand for them. The focus right now is on the speeder. It pops to BKB and has the Satanic to boot. Jabs on the outskirts of his base will be broken. Disruption is there while the rest of his supports die. And it's just Jabs now along with the storm as GG's come out. So Falcons do win the series. Definitely tougher than a lot of people, including ourselves, were anticipating. Aurora putting up a good fight. Yeah, but it does end up in the same...